carbohydrate these are basically energy giving food right what function the main function is that it gives us energy it gives human being animals the energy to do our daily work to run to study you're sitting for one and a half hours and studying because of energy from where are you getting bread, a little bit of rice and rice a bottle of night now the sources of carbohydrates all of you know we have studied in our last class is wheat rice maize potato honey etc right so this is the part with carbohydrate now we come to protein why do we emphasize so much on protein we emphasize so much on protein because as we had discussed that this is the building block of our uh, this is the building block of our body amino acids right see there are these five points very important five points why we need proteins for bodybuilding for digestion why enzymes remember we need for growth we need little bit of is of it is remember as stored as glycogen and body protection from infections right for example i'll just give you an example when we have fever when we have flu what happens there are these certain you know white blood cells which are basically proteins which fights against the bacteria and the germs so it protects the body from virus and bacteria and germs so that's the reason why protein is always required for us to stay healthy and to maintain a active life and a strong healthy life right from where do we get uh, proteins we get it from pulses egg meat paneer cheese chicken fish milk etc right now adults require 1 gram for every 1 kg of body weight what does that mean if a person is 50 kg weight that person would require 50 grams of protein every day right if a person is uh, like uh, maybe if, if a person is 70 kg that person would require 70 grams of protein per day but in case of children what happens in case of children it is 1.5 times for example if a child is 30 kg that person would require not 30 gram but 45 grams of protein per day correct and especially and women also who are you know giving birth to children birth to babies pregnant women also need to have a lot of protein because there's a child growing inside the body right so protein basically is needed for growth and development for body building right so protein is a very important nutrient in that is needed in our daily diet we will now coming to fats fats are also basically energy giving food you know the main source is energy and it also enhances the taste and flavor you know you put butter into anything that that food becomes so tasty you put ghee into it you know paratha plain paratha you have it's okay but you put a lot of ghee into the paratha it becomes tastier yes ma'am it is the fat yes so basically fats add taste and flavor and it reserves it is a reserve food source as i said reserve food source remember the sports day activity if all your carbohydrate glucose reserve is exhausted only then your fat reserve will be utilized for energy not in the beginning first carbohydrate will be utilized to energy for energy then fat will be utilized okay now as we had studied butter cheese vegetable oil coconut oil groundnut oil all kinds of oils basically are sources of fat we get fats from all these things food and an adult requires 70 to 80 grams of protein uh, fats only per day can you see the difference we need so much of carbohydrate 600 grams of carbohydrate yes ma'am fats we require so little 70 to 80 grams is enough per day for an adult correct now coming to water water is the medium for body reactions that's what we had discussed if we do not have water in our body digestion will not happen we will not get energy our nervous system will not work our muscular system will not work we will only lie down in one place we will not be able to see properly all the organs will go for a toss right it is also the trans helps in the transport of substances what does this mean you know uh, 
so this is this you know blood you know uh, water is a part of the blood right so what does blood do blood helps blood is basically the transport medium to you know to send one maybe you know it could be minerals it could be oxygen it could be waste materials it sends transport from one organ to the other organ so water is a major part of uh, you know blood so water is required what is the meaning of transport going from one place to another yes uh, i'll just give you an example for example if your food has to be digested it has to go from your mouth to the stomach to the small intestine just imagine if your food was dry it was just dry absolutely no water and your body was also dry no water no saliva nothing no mucus do you think the food would have gone from your mouth to your stomach ma'am we drink water yes yes so water is basically required for transport of substances be it food be it oxygen be it waste materials it has to go from one place an organ to the other okay got it now yeah waste removal you know water is a major part of urine right because water you know as it transports it also collects all the waste material from all the organs from the small intestine and large intestine it will take out all the waste materials from the kidney it will take all the waste materials it will take all the waste materials and it will you know help in the removal from the body be it through sweat be it through urine but it will flush out all the waste material from the body right and also maintenance of constant body temperature because of water inside our body we are able to maintain a constant body temperature right in our case maybe you know it is almost 94 degree fahrenheit our regular body temperature i could be sitting here in calcutta which is hot maintenance of constant body temperature would mean every human body has a constant temperature which is 94 degree fahrenheit or maybe you know 97 degree fahrenheit right so that's a constant body temperature and water helps in maintaining that temperature because of water only that temperature is been maintained in most all the, all the human beings have a constant body temperature maybe 0.1 degree here and there for example if my body temperature is 97.3 somebody else's would be 97.4 somebody else's would be 97.2 but that's a constant body temperature only in case of fever it will go up to 99 or 100 but otherwise all of us have a constant body temperature and that happens because of water water maintains the body temperature even if it is winter even if it is summer or monsoon but our body temperature remains the same all season everywhere keeps our body slightly warm okay so we get water from of course directly from pure drinking water from cucumber you must all have a lot of cucumber because cucumber is considered to be 96% water cucumber and watermelon are supposed to be the highest source of water in case of fruits and vegetable right so is spinach and tomatoes spinach and tomatoes also have a lot of water content you can have raw grapes and carrot they have high amount of water what is it regularly we must have we must have 6 to 8 glasses of water every single day right we must have 3 and a half to 4 liters of water every day if we do not have 4 liters of water every day our body will have dehydration okay ma'am right so this is ah. very much needed what is common body temperature it is 97.3 okay ma'am thank okay. you yeah now when we roughage remember we had the first thing we discussed was roughage which we get from green leafy vegetables they basically add as we discussed fiber adds bulk to our food this helps in maintaining the regular bowel movement every single day if you don't have roughage and fiber every day you will not have a clear bowel correct so which are the food where you get a lot of fiber spinach cabbage beans peas cereals like you know you should have a lot of oats and um cornflakes cereals have a lot of roughage in them lady's finger 
it is a little slimy and slippery which has got a lot of cellulose in it right so every single day we must have 12.8 to 14.8 grams of roughage only then will we have a healthy body and you know our body uh, will have a regular bubble movement